A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the round table. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you for joining me. I'm Chrisanta. And this evening, once again, we have a very, very important personality here in, in the studios with me. He is uh, currently the head of one of Sri Lanka's uh, oldest and one of Sri Lanka's very important financial institutions, and that is none other than the uh, bankers to the nation, Jati Mahapahan Temple. Bank of Ceylon. Please welcome my guest this evening, uh, the chairman of Bank of Ceylon, Dr. Gamini Vikramasinghe. A very good evening to you, doctor, and thank you for taking your time off uh, and joining us with the round table. Uh, doctor, I've got so many questions lined up for you this evening. And to start off, a uh, little bit about yourself. Doctor, you have, uh, you have a graduate, you are a graduate from the University of Aston, Birmingham in UK and with over a decade of extensive senior level experience. You came back to Sri Lanka in 1983 and then you founded, you, you founded the Informative, Informatics. Informatic group of companies. My first question to you, um, with all your qualifications back then, uh, you left it all aside and you came back to Sri Lanka. Why did you do that? And followed with that question, what is your message for people who are out there, who are still uh, professionals like you, who are still out there and trying to make a decision at least to come back to Sri Lanka now? What is your message? Why did you do that? Why did you take that decision then? Uh, it was a very difficult decision because I was out of the country for about uh, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, in England and in, in Brussels, Belgium. But uh, after you study and you start working and then uh, you have seen large part of the world, you have traveled, uh, then always, uh, I, I don't know, in my particular case, I always wanted to come back to Sri Lanka. I wanted to do something for the country. Uh, so that is the main reason why I came back. Because otherwise I was doing very well, doing very really responsible jobs abroad, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, came and wanted to start something here. Okay. And <laughs> the message to the newcomers, uh, the other people who are outside, okay. uh, I came not a very good time, I came in 83, mm -hmm. and you all know in 83 what happened. Yeah. Uh, I came before that problem, mm -hmm. I came in February 83, mm -hmm. July was the problem. Uh, but now that 30 year or three decades of war is over. Mm -hmm. The country is uh, about to take off uh, and uh, stable government. Uh, so I think this is a very, very good time. If anybody wants to come in and join the country's development mm -hmm. and the, your own development, this is a good time to come to Sri Lanka. Thank you, Doctor. I think that's a very important thing because we need all these professionals, the Sri Lankan professionals back in the country to lead Sri Lanka into that, into in, in becoming the jewel of Asia. Now, doctor, uh, considered a, a pioneering IT company, informatics, uh, came into new concepts, very novel things of uh, mainly teaching quality British uh, educations, uh, making it locally available. Now, throughout uh, its inception, over 2,000 Sri Lankan youth has managed to get world recognized qualifications, British qualifications on uh, um, postgraduate as well as um, um, uh, uh, undergraduate. Now, my question is this, you have made this qualification <coughs> an affordable one for the Sri Lankan and, and for the Sri Lankan curriculum in higher studies, it has helped immensely. What are your views on uh, foreign universities coming into Sri Lanka? Yeah, if I, if I start uh, at the very beginning when we first started this uh, education program, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that is somewhat selfish reason in the sense uh, informatics, uh, we are in IT business, we needed qualified people joining us mm -hmm. at that particular time when we started in, uh, in 90. Okay. Uh, the whole, whole of Sri Lanka, all our universities did not produce even 50 computer science graduates, mm -hmm. computing graduates, mm -hmm. any discipline related to that. Uh, but the country had a demand. We ourselves had a demand. So that's the time we thought we'd come and 
come on the ter tertiary education and also make a contribution in education. So that is the way we started and we have, uh, like you said, about more than 2,000 uh, undergraduates, postgraduates have gone through our system. Uh, they are doing very well locally and abroad. Uh, now, talking about the other foreign universities, <coughs> I don't know whether you all, uh, you attended this Dr. Mahathir, um, uh, this presentation when he made, uh, when he was in Sri Lanka last week. Mm -hmm. He mentioned two things, it's very interesting to hear. He said uh, Malaysia in 1997, of the cr currency crisis, uh, the IMF, he said, dictated terms to them, but they didn't accept it mm -hmm. for two reasons. One main reason is they had uh, more than 40 percent savings in the country. Number two, he said they had education. So the education, he said, they had, uh, even today, I don't know whether it is the case, he said at the time, both 30 national universities and about 30 international universities came and set up business. So they gave the education to all their people. They sent them abroad for education. They, uh, they, within the country, they provided the education. He said those two helped the country to come out of the problems mm -hmm. and turn an agriculture nation to an uh, industrial nation. So he, I don't know, that is what his <coughs> attribution though. In Sri Lanka now, last week I heard this uh, Minister of Higher Education, Mr. S. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he welcomed foreign universities to come and establish their programs in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. the, if, from my personal view, I think it's a good idea because uh, more than I think 200,000 people sit for A-levels or are eligible to enter university and only about 20,000 get in. Get inside, yeah. So what, about, what, what are the other people doing? Mm -hmm. So if the education can be provided here, in our case about one tenth the cost mm -hmm. that you would have to pay, incur that in the, in the UK. Mm -hmm. So from Australia and England, America, all these countries, if they can have various disciplines, that will really strengthen Sri Lanka's uh, economy and then we'll get the trained uh, and qualified workforce. Mm -hmm. So that's to the benefit of the country. Right. So you have a, a doctorate in, in business administration from the Manchester Metropolitan University. You are a fellow of the Chartered Management Institute of UK. You also, you're also a fellow of the British Computer Society along with all this with a demonstrated vision for the future, your pioneering spirit and outstanding capabilities. His Excellency the President entrusted you with uh, appointing you as Chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Chairman of the Insurance Board and the Chairman of Bank of Ceylon. Sir, uh, my question is managing all these positions, uh, the focus, the, the commitment, um, <coughs> that you put into all this, how do you manage as a person um, handling all these three? Uh, is it is it a part of uh, the experience that you have got being exposed to the international market, or is it something that you were uh, born gifted, talented with? <laughs> I think uh, it is a combination of all what you said. Okay. Uh, definitely, your education, your exposure to business, and uh, uh, handling difficult situations mm -hmm. uh, is important and also that I started business also in Sri Lanka, working in Sri Lanka. That is also important because I was out of the country, now I got into the country. That experience, hands-on experience was mm -hmm. really valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, trying, I was like a brand new person coming to the country mm -hmm. after many years starting. Uh, nobody knew me so you had to start everything from scratch mm -hmm. and then take it to a certain height. Uh, so that all helped mm -hmm. and then uh, the organization you mentioned, uh, I think uh, you must be committed and, uh, and if you put yourself at it and you must dedicate yourself 100%. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to do part time. Mm -hmm. Even though I did, nobody expected me to do <laughs> full time work, <laughs> they wanted me to go there for a few hours a day. Okay. But uh, once you really want to see that organization achieve their objectives, uh, you had to put your heart and soul. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's, uh, that's the <laughs> chemistry <secret> of <laughs> handling three yeah. uh, companies. So coming 